So welcome to the learn session from uh, 25th of uh, March, uh, where we covered the uh, learning session for computational design. Uh, this is about a 20-minute uh, uh, video, which takes all the steps. So, um, so we start in 3D. Um, make sure you created the 3D model, and then referencing in the 3D model from the data set. So it's going to be the Super Thursday uh, Real DTN. So again, uh, make sure you include the 3D model uh, from the DTN. So empty 3D and empty 3D DTN, and then uh, referencing in the 3D model. So basically, you see on the left side the node types, and the, um, the right side you see the transactions and the graph. Uh, we're going to place a point uh, first on the coordinate system so that's going to be the 0, .0 0.0 and it will continue with uh, basically um, the option to place points in your 3d model as a start for your range so the range is going to be the area which the elements you want to use them from um, so place them you don't have to do anything just continue and then you've got the um, yeah the the graphic or the coordinate system and the two points defined. Now we will continue directly with the range. So uh, you can click on it or drag it into the right side and then hook up the lower point into the uh, point one and the higher point on the point two. So um, you can turn on, turn off the visibility of the coordinate system. It's uh, easier to um, navigate in the end. So, uh, and also make the clipping box uh, higher. So. Um, make it at least uh, high enough, so like 30 meters, so all the geometry is inside of this box. Um, let's record this transaction, so we will do it manual, uh, each step you can see it. You can also do it automatic, but that's, um, yeah, I think it manual is, is better, you control better your steps. So, um, so now we've got the range and the geometry, so now we, what the next step will be is that we're going to extract the, yeah, the center lines uh, and the and the rails from the 3D model. So uh, we're going to use a polyline and then from elements in range and then use a filter. So um, yeah, when you have the input on the left, right, uh, and on the right side, the output. So filter by level name. Um, so let's check what's the name of the layer. Uh, so it's geometry baseline. So that's what we have copied and then use an use it as a filter. So we're going to use only this layer uh, and then hook it up to the range. So now only this element is being used uh, from the 3D model. So there's a live link between the two of them, um, but just, yeah, you can turn off the, the view. So um, just to get a clear picture now. So these are the elements. You can rename the, the box here, center line, and then, uh, yeah, record this step. So we're going to say extract uh, center lines, for instance. Um, so this is like a little story which you, um, which you're, yeah, which you can play uh, over and over again. So also with other models. Um, so now we're going to define basically the start point and the end point uh, or the a start and end basically and we're going to use two points so um, drag them in it's um, it's trying to connect but delete the wires and then we say the point has been defined uh, by a distance along a curve yeah. so uh, the distance is going to be calculated uh, rename the the box so start segments and let's call this one end segments um, yeah, that looks fine. And now we can <clears throat> use a little calculator here from the utility part. Um, so we're going to use a start and end. That's the, our little calculation here to get the value out. So we say uh, this is the start and this is the end. So basically we're going to place the slabs um, and now we have to define where to start. So we say uh, 5.2, that's the length, but we want to start already earlier, that's the center point, <clears throat> but we want to start the, the first point, 2.6, so that's the edge basically. And then we're going to uh, end, uh, and the length of the center line is 499, so let's include this value as well. So now we're going to say the start of the segment is the start for our calculation, and then the end is also uh, wiring back to the 
to this one. And now the curve, this one is interesting. We want to use only the left side. So what you can do is um, hover over, see what is the name. You can type it in later on. Or with a little trick, you can also copy it. So if you have got this box, um, left click, a control key, keep it, and then left click, and it's going to use this value. So left click with the control key, and it's going to wire the right one. So now we've got created two points, <clears throat> the start and end. Um, yeah, record a step. So <clears throat> make it more, um, yeah, descriptive. So start and end, um, yeah. Defined, mm -hmm. so that looks much better. So now we've got this one. Um, so now we create only two points basically. Now we want to create a line between those two points. Um, it's going to be a uh, yeah the option B spline curve. So it's going to follow actually the the, the center line. So um, so what we can say is extract the region from start and end. So um, so what you can do is here. What is the original one? Our original one is the center line. And the start is our start segment. Mm -hmm. That's the, the calculated area. And then we say the end is there. So that looks fine. Um, so you see also it generated now a line. Um, the only thing is I did make a little mistake. It's created now two. So we have to make sure we are selecting only the center line. So center line zero. Um, so yeah, let's do it again. Um, click on it. I think that's the best way. Uh, and then control key, left click. So now it generates only one, um, yeah, element between those two points. Otherwise it's going to use two elements. It's possible, but it's, it's more complica complicated in the end, uh, especially when you make a mistake. Um, so let's keep it simple. We say extract the line between two points. No, that's what we have done now. Um, so now we we defined the start and end. We defined which elements. Now let's create the points on these on these um, yeah on this line. So we're going to use a coordinate system here. We're going to use a by uh, which one was it? Yeah, by spacing along a curve, I think. Mm -hmm. So let's see. Yeah, so there it is. I think it's there. So we're going to say which, what is the curve? So the curve is the previous elements. Um, and then the spacing is the 5.2 meters. So that's the length of the slab basically. So every, so the beginning is 2.6 and then every 5.2 meters, we're going to place a point basically. Um, so we say here, um, add a coordinate, um, every 2.5.2 meters, or I'm not sure if that is allowing me this dot. So uh, let's call it a winter interval. <clears throat> so you can check also the planes. So if you hover over, you see the plane. So the XY plane or the uh, YZ plane. So um, yeah, that's important in the end. So yeah, wonderful. Uh, so we recorded the step. And now we're going to focus on the uh, reel. So let's um, extract the uh, reels. So similar step to the center line, we're going to um, use the same option polyline. You rename it, so we call it tracks, and then say from element in range. Um, and then, yeah. Use the filter again, so different options to filter, but I will use this one. Um, so let's turn on the reference file again. Um, let's check what is the, the name of the layer here. Um, so it's a bit hard to see. So yeah, it's not default. Let's pick, let's try to pick it again. No, let's do the other one. Yeah, that's easier. So a real geometry can't. Um, so let's control C uh, and then control V. Um, and then you can hook it up. So I think that's the easiest way. Just do the filtering. 
because otherwise it will use all the elements in the 3D model and then you do the filter, it takes a bit, a bit longer. So um, so let's turn on the, um, yeah, the visibility of the reference file. So now you see the elements which are inside and then record this step and <clears throat> uh, make it the proper description. So we extract basically the left and right rail. Yeah, much better. Um, so now we've done that one. Um, yeah, so the next step is going to create points. So the points um, left on the left side of the rail and the right rail. So, uh, so we're going to use this one left. So let's rename the, the name of the this input. So uh, we're going to use a different one. We're going to use this point is going to be in this plane, this uh, YZ plane. So um, it's going to be um, at a plane curve intersection. Yeah, so let's use this one. Um, so we can just browse at plane curve intersection. Yeah, that's the one. Um, and now <clears throat> let's, instead of, Copy, uh, yeah, dragging it to the right side. You can also copy this one and then uh, paste it. I think that's sometimes easier. It's remembering the um, the settings. Uh, so let's rename this one. Uh, it's going to be the right side, basically. Um, I think that's it. And now we have to, yeah, connect them. So what we can do here is to set as output the right plane. So this one is going to be the uh, YZ plane. So you can also check it in your 3D model. Um, that's the plane basically. So the points should be exactly in this plane. That's what we are saying. And now we say the plane is going to be the defined by the output of this one. Uh, for both sides. So we're going to use uh, both sides. And now the the one which is important, which element? So we don't want to have all elements, only the left side. So you can check it, polyline track two and track one. So what you can do is the same trick. Um, yeah, control key, left click. It's going to uh, wire the right one um, and then do the same for the right side. So, yeah, so left click, control key, and then it's going to use that value. Um, so, yeah, that looks fine. So, no errors. That's always nice, isn't it? Um, so, now you see those uh, points um, projected um, in the plane uh, for the left rail and right rail. So, let's record this step. So, we call it, um, yeah, create points. Uh, something like this. You can always rename it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and then that's it. So now we're going to use two types of coordinate systems here to rotate the uh, coordinate uh, system or the, yeah, rotate the, the plane basically. Um, so the first one is by primary secondary directions yeah so the first one is that one the later on we will do the rotation so let's let's go here so there are a lot of options so the origin one is the left side of the rail in this case um, the other one is the primary is the right one primary direction so the direction is going to be the right one and then the secondary direction is going to be x direction so you can also as output include it there so you can wire it um, so yeah so x direction and then set the value here uh, the primary x is the x and the primary or the secondary x is the uh, y so let's see um, now you can also check it in your tree model um, it should be tilted so now it's, um, yeah, it's exactly in the same plane of these two points. <clears throat> um, yeah, so make sure, yeah, 
take some time to understand what you're trying to do. Um, so here we're going to record this step again. Um, let's call it, we added a coordinate system or preacted coordinate system. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is like a little, um, this is a script which you're creating. Uh, the script is stored in the DGN and also outside, so in the text file. So you can always import it or uh, reuse it again. Um, so now we are going to do the easy part, uh, rotation of the coordinate system. Um, so let's check here. It's going to be rotation. Um, this one is pretty easy, so remove the uh, wire here. And now you can um, say the origin is going back to the um, origin, basically. And then the previous one is the coordinate system itself is also going back to that one. Um, now we say the, um, the angle is zero. And the X is the Y one. Mm -hmm. If you pick the wrong one, you will see it directly later on here, 3D model, once you, when you, once you place the, shell, the slabs, basically. So now you don't see much, but um, yeah. So this is the rotation. Um, I think that was the most complicated part. So now we will place the slabs by using the cells. So um, I forgot the, um, the recording, but let's do the uh, within this step. So, um, so what I can do here is uh, place the slabs. Um, yeah, that's fine. It's by coordinate system. So let's click on the dots here. You can uh, select the cell library, which is in the data set and then uh, check what is the name. Um, so there's slab track. So copy, hmm, select it, control C and then say uh, here, And use this cell name is going to be the slab track yeah so that's the one and now we say um right yeah wire it up so so you can connect them here so let's hope for how it looks like yeah it looks great um so that's yeah wonderful so now let's record this step so i forgot the rotation so let's include it in the description as well so rotate um, yeah, coordinate system and uh, add the, yeah, the slabs basically. Mm -hmm. um, okay, let's do the other one as well. So we've got two parts here and we've got two cells, uh, one for the slab itself and one for the concrete. Uh, so let's do the same. So I could have copied, I think that's easier in the end, but let's do it again. Concrete slab and then uh, the name. So, um, yeah, so let me check what it is. Cells, Let's type in cells and then see. Okay, so it's SCC. So, Control C, um, go to the mm, cell name. If you pin it, it will be visible right there. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. So now you can say placement. No, not to that one. To the coordinate system. Let's see if you are still awake. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're going to use the same position basically. Um, so let's see how it looks like. So it looks, it looks great. I mean, yeah, wonderful. So there's now a dynamic link between the 3D models. So whenever there's a change, um, you can. So um, yeah, rename the box. <clears throat> So your colleagues can understand it as well, or, or you can, if you play the script for another model, um, that's fine. So um, so now let's check it with the 3D model. So um, if you turn on the uh, reference form, you will see it. So yeah, that looks fine. I mean, it's exactly in this plane. Um, yeah, wonderful. So. If you want to cop do the other one, you can copy the um, yeah the 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 one the script and then do the right side. So I hope you enjoyed it uh, and hope to see you soon again. Bye bye.